everyone. Thank you for watching. So in this video, we're going to be proving that the limit of the square root of x as x approaches 4 is 2 using the epsilon delta definition. So let me remind you of what the epsilon delta definition of a limit is. So for all epsilon greater than 0, there is a delta greater than 0 such that for all x, if in absolute value x minus 4, so the distance in the x direction, x minus 4, is less than delta, then in absolute value, a square root of x, which is our function f of x, minus the limit, that's 2, is going to be less than epsilon. So that's how you set up the epsilon delta definition. Now let's prove it. So we kind of play around to figure out what the delta is depending on epsilon so we can construct the proof. So let's do some scrap work. So we start from here and kind of way our, our way back up to this statement right here. So let me show you how we're going to do that. So here's our uh, scrap work for the proof. So we want this square root of x minus 2 to be less than epsilon. So here's what I can rewrite this as. So this is exactly equal to square root of x minus 2. And I'm going to multiply this by its conjugate, which is square root of x plus 2 over the square root of x plus 2. Now, by doing that, I didn't change the question because multiplying by 1, it remains the same thing. But it's going to work out for us. So that's why we want to do this. So if I simplify this further on the numerator, you're going to get this. So you have a square root of x minus 2 times square root of x plus 2. And on the denominator, you're going to just get square root of x plus 2. And now on the numerator, continue to distribute. So you'll have the absolute value of x minus 4. Because here, when you expand this right here, you're going to get a difference of two perfect squares. So from algebra, we know this formula, a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So we're kind of using that when you're expanding it. So you get x minus 4 in absolute value. And on the bottom, we can just write that as the absolute value of square root of x plus 2. Well, now let's pay attention to this a little bit more. Now, we have control over this piece right here because we know that that's going to be right here. That's less than some delta. So can we control the one in the denominator? Well, kind of, right? So if you look at this right here, this quantity is going to be greater than zero, it's meaning positive. So the entire piece, we know that this right here is going to be greater than zero. So since this quantity is positive, I can remove the absolute value. So this is really just... Um, absolute value of x minus 4 divided by a square root of x plus 2. Now it looks almost like our assumption, but except the denominator, we just wanted a 2, not a square root of x. Now let's think about this. Can we just drop that? Yeah, we can drop it, but let's think about it this way. If I do drop this factor right here, I am going to say that, well, this is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus 4 over 2. So let me see if you follow this, think about it this way. If you plug in a 1 here for x, you'll have 1 plus 2. So you have some number on top, let's say 1, 1 over 3, and then you have 1 over 2. Well, if the denominator is growing, then overall the fraction value is going to be lower. So we know this is less than that. That's why I choose that inequality. I know that left side is strictly less than or could be equal to absolute value of x minus 4 divided by 2. Well, now here, we can be a little bit more creative. So we know that x minus 4, that we want that this entire statement, this right here, to be less than epsilon. So we found our choice of delta. So I know that this is going to be the following. So we can say that this is going to be less than epsilon. So we want x minus 4 to be less than epsilon times 2. And this is our choice for delta. So this is what we're going to choose delta to be. Now we can construct the proof 
going backward. So just backtracking all of these steps. So here's how the formal proof is going to go. So we want to prove that limit. So we let epsilon be greater than zero be given. And we're going to choose delta to be two times epsilon. So then if an absolute value of x minus four is less than delta and making sure x is not four because what else it wouldn't make sense, then we have the following. An absolute value square root of x minus two, we know that this is equal to x minus four in absolute value over square root of x plus two. Now that's the statement right here. So when you re sketch the proof, we're writing this and that right here. So after uh, multiplying by the conjugate, so that's where I'm comparing. So I know that this statement is going to be less than or equal to absolute value of x minus four over two. And we know this is going to be less than delta. Well, delta is two times epsilon. So this is equal to Oh, actually it's less than. So this is gonna be less than two times epsilon over two, which is equal to epsilon. And that's what we wanted. So now we're happy, we're able to complete the proof. So we have uh, proven that the limit as x approaches four of a square root of x is two. So that completes our proof.